There's a big event coming to the Strand in Providence on April 1st. It's a conversation with the Sopranos. And joining us, one of the main Sopranos actors, Michael Imperioli, a.k.a. Christopher. Michael, tell us all about uh, that. You've been going around the country doing this conversation. Tell us how it works. Uh, well, it's um, Steve Sharippa, who played Bobby Bacala, Vinnie Pastor, who played Big Pussy, and myself. And uh, we're on stage. And um, we talk about, you know, our experience on the show, how we got on the show, what it was like in the beginning, um, what it was like working with Jim, James Gandolfini and Tony Sirico and David Chase. And um, we tell a lot of behind the scenes stories. Um, a lot of it's very funny. Uh, I think a lot of it kind of has the camaraderie you'd expect from The Sopranos, um, some of the humor. If you're a fan, you know, it's kind of a uh, behind the scenes glimpse at what went on. And uh, we've been doing it for a while, for a number of years. We've toured all around the country in Canada and we've toured in Australia. And um, it's very interactive because the, uh, the last part of the show is Q&A and the audience, audience members can ask us whatever they like. And um, we get lots of, lots of varied questions from people. And, but if we can answer it, we will. So in the show, at some point, you did make a trek to Rhode Island to, uh, I believe you had to hire a hitman for something uh, to get a job done. Did you actually come up to Rhode Island during the show? How, how did that happen? Yeah, we shot um, in Providence, you know, the, uh, I forgot the name of those were those, they were these old time wise guys who were living together. Uh, a blind woman was kind of taking care of them in this very creepy house and, uh, it was a very spooky experience. So they were really good actors. Uh, Richard Bright was one of the actors who was in The Godfather, actually, was Michael Corleone's bodyguard in a lot of The Godfather movies. While you were here in Rhode Island, did you do anything memorable? And how long did it take you to shoot that part? Well, that was like 20 years ago, so <laughs> I don't really remember. <laughs> I, don't, I barely remember last <laughs> Tuesday, but so, uh, you know, I think we were up there a couple of days. All right, so uh, during, the, during the show, you said it's interactive, and at the end of the show, uh, people get to ask questions of uh, you, Steve, and Vin. Um, how does that work? Do they just give a microphone around the audience, or is it like a brawl? Do you have like a free-for-all to see who gets asked the question? How's no, it well, we don't have a free-for-all. <laughs> Actually, that's how it started, and we realized very quickly that was a big mistake. No, what happens is there's microphones, stands planted in the audience, and people line up behind them. And we try to get to as many as we can in the last part of the show. The show opens with a comedian named Joey Cola, who does, you know, about 15 minutes of really funny stand up. And then he interviews us on stage. Um, he's like the moderator. And uh, we have a lot of fun. You know, the three of us are really good friends, Vinny and Steve and I. And um, I think there's a really nice chemistry. Um, and, uh, you know, there'll be, it's, there's a lot of laughs as well, you know. I mean, there's some of it sad, you know. We're talking about some of the, our colleagues that are gone, you know, like Jim Gandolfini and Tony Sirico and Nancy Marchand. But, um, but a lot of it's, you know, really fun and funny. And you're involved in a podcast related to The Sopranos, too. You want to talk about that? Steve and I did a podcast called Talking Sopranos, which started during the pandemic, where we did an episode-by-episode episode rewatch and, you know, analysis of the show, you know, and just talking about it. Um, and it became very popular during the pandemic because people were, lo you know, locked down in their houses. A lot of people were binge watching The Sopranos, either for the 20th time or the first time. And uh, the podcast can be like a companion piece. You can watch the episode and watch the podcast and learn about some of the details and behind the scenes stuff. Um, and we did every single episode uh, of The Sopranos week by week, um, and then uh, we published a book that was, you know, kind of uh, launched by the podcast called Woke Up This Morning that comes out in paperback uh, very soon. It came out in hardcover uh, about a year and a half ago. Can you give us a little tidbit of like maybe a part of a story that you guys are going to share at the event on the first? Um, let me see. A lot of funny stuff involves Tony Sirico, because he was quite a character. Um, and uh, 
I, I do a uh, demonstration of how he did his hair. Because it was always a secret. Tony showed up to the set with his hair already done. You know, when you do TV or film, you get there in the morning, you go in the hair trailer, and the hairdresser does your hair. Tony showed up ready to go, and apparently he had this very mysterious process that nobody knew about. Until one day, we were doing a photo shoot for one of the posters for an upcoming season. And myself and Jamie Lynn Sigler and Robert Eiler, who played the Soprano Kids, you know, we got to see Tony doing his hair. And uh, I demonstrate on the stage, but I'm not going to do it because folks going to have to come down and right. watch me demonstrate Tony Sirico doing his hair live on stage in conversation with the Sopranos. Well, you and I both have the kind of gray on the sides now, so we can probably both pull it off now. Well, I have gray all over, but... So this is going to seem weird. Uh, I saw you in White Lotus before I saw you in Sopranos. Oh, my, so you were late. My Sopranos. wife and I are still watching it now. We started in January. She's been after me for a long time to watch it. And uh, we started in January. We're on season six, almost done with uh, season 6A right now. So anyway, you probably don't get too many people who've seen you in White Lotus first, but I'm, I'm one of them. Anyway, what, what did I miss? What do you want to tell the people? people. Why, why should people come and see the show? Why should they see the... T the yeah, you're in, co in conversation. Sopranos. Yeah, why should they come to the strand? You know... You know, what, what, what's amazed me doing this, traveling around the country and Australia and meeting fans uh, who are paying money to buy a ticket to see three guys talk about something they did 20 years ago, um, it's amazing to see how important the show is to people. Um, a lot of people when they watched the show 20 years ago or whatever, when it was first on the air, they have happy memories to watch because it was only on Sunday nights. It wasn't streaming back then. Sunday nights, they'd have a soprano party and order pizza or make pasta and their family and friends would get together to watch the next episode. And a lot of people have very fond memories of that. Um, so the show, to a lot of its fans, occupies a very important place in their hearts. And that's... Uh, that means a lot to me, and, and I get to see that up close, you know, in, in person when, when we do these shows. All right, great. Uh, it's Michael Imperioli, Conversation with Sopranos. It's coming up on April 1st at The Strand. We're going to be talking to Steve uh, next about this, so uh, stay tuned for that.